Welcome everyone to the next video of my series towards helping people pick which job they should play in Final Fantasy XIV. On the last part, we talked about Paladin, but today we're switching things up and talking about the healer I suggest, White Mage. A quick side note and disclaimer, this series is not a tier list, just approachable jobs for new players to the game or to the role itself. Like Paladin and Warrior in the previous videos, White Mage is available at level 1, and starts as a class called Conjurer. You can begin the process in Gridania. A quick overview of White Mage is that it is a regen healer, meaning it specializes more in restoring your team's health rather than shielding and mitigating attacks. I choose White Mage as my ideal healer for beginners due to its straightforwardness of what it accomplishes. From a white mage, you can expect large flat heals and regens. To start, we'll go over healing GCDs, as well as the OGCDs available. I wanted to quickly go over the meanings of a few terms first. Flat, or burst healing, means the ability to quickly replenish health bars in little to no time at all. Whereas regens, or HOTs, standing for heals over time, is gradual, but consistent healing. For levels 2 through 29, your single target heal is Cure 1. It's nothing more than a cheap costing heal that can be used on a single target. This will be your primary resource for keeping tanks alive until level 30. At level 10, we'll get access to our first heal that hits our entire party, called Medica. You want to use this in scenarios where everyone is taking damage, not just the tank. There is a range on it though, so just keep that in mind. At level 30, we'll gain access to Cure 2, which is a stronger version of Cure 1, albeit for a higher mana cost. Do not let the mana cost scare you, as you should always use Cure 2 instead of Cure 1. Cure 1 is one of the biggest noob traps in the game, due to a trait that incentivizes it. There is no cases where Cure 1 is viable instead of Cure 2, unless you're doing contents below level 29. At level 25, White Mage will unlock three new abilities, the YouTube subscribe button, as well as the Twitch and Twitter follow buttons. These three abilities are particularly efficient due to them costing zero mana. At level 35, White Mage will gain access to arguably the strongest GCD heal in the entire game out of all four healers. Regen is an instant cast single target heal over time. The mana cost is negligible, and the potency is a whopping 1500 over the course of 18 seconds. The drawback is that it's a heal over time, as well as generating enmity from enemies. It is still extremely efficient though and remains one of your strongest tools in the endgame. An excellent way to start incorporating this into your play is to throw regen on your tank while they're pulling monsters in your dungeon pull. You should also refresh it during the big pulls. Like I said before, it does generate enmity, and if your tank is not keeping tabs on his enmity list, you might have an enemy hitting you. To absolve this, stay as close to your tank as possible during pulls, and if for whatever reason they still don't pull the mob off of you, you can safely say that is their mistake. At level 40, we gain another tool for healing the party called Cure 3. Cure 3 is a phenomenal ability that should replace nearly all the cases of using Medica 1. It is your primary burst healing GCD, meaning if your team needs a lot of health fast, pop a Cure 3. It's worth mentioning the spell costs a moderately high cost of 1,500 mana, but we'll come back to that. Next up at level 50 is Medica 2, which, like Medica 1, will heal your entire party, except this time will provide a potent healing over time effect. Medica 2 is your go-to healing GCD in most cases, due to its massive range, reliable healing output due to the regen ticks, as well as its fair mana cost. The only thing I would warn you about is that I often see novice white mages spam this ability, which is particularly inefficient. The burst healing on the ability is weak, and all you're doing is refreshing the heal over time effect 
and sacrificing all of the duration that was already on each player. If your party is still wounded after your Medica 2 and is in need of more healing, explore your other options before sending yet another Medica 2. Upon reaching level 52 and onward, we'll be introduced to a new system called Lilies. In combat, the White Mage will slowly generate a Lily token every 20 seconds. These tokens can then be spent on your first ability using this currency, called Aflatus Solus. Before we go on, I wanted to mention that all Aflatus abilities do not have a mana cost and are instant cast. For all intents and purposes, Aflatus Solus is a Cure 2, with all the same potencies and healing, except for the fact that it's an instant cast, meaning that you can use it while moving and on the go. Further onward, at level 76, we'll gain access to the second Lily ability, called Aflatus Rapture. Aflatus Rapture is the exact same stats as Medica 1, except also has an additional 5 Yalm range. Like the previous ability, the only key difference between this ability and Medica 1 is that it can be used while moving. When playing White Mage, you should try to use the Lilies when you're in a dungeon or a raid scenario that you're being forced to move in or dodge a mechanic. Yet, you can continue healing the party. So we have two irregular GCDs to talk about now that I still put under the healing umbrella since they're support. The first is Asuna, which will cleanse debuffs from you or a party member. These are things like silence, poison, paralysis, or in endgame content, sometimes it's like a doom which will kill a player if they don't get asuna -ed. The way you can tell if you can cleanse it is if the debuff has a white bar on the top side of it. That means you can Asuna. The other irregular GCD we have is Raise, which will resurrect a player from the dead. The mana cost on it is enormous, as well as its cast time. We'll talk about mitigating the cast time of Raise a bit later, as well as the mana cost. But in general, it's always the healer's job first to take care of the raising, unless they're busy healing to prevent further deaths. Now that we've talked about the GCD heals, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the OGCD heals for White Mage. First, with general utility, we'll have Lucid Dreaming, which is on a one minute cooldown and it replenishes your mana over time. Once an encounter begins, you should pop this and spam it off cooldown so you don't run out of mana. Level 50 will give us Benediction, or more commonly known as Benny, as the community calls it. It's an instant cast, three minute cooldown, full heal, no questions asked. This synergizes particularly well with Warrior or Gunbreaker's tank invulnerability, but also is an excellent general use o button to instantly top someone off or save someone's life who's failed a mechanic. I recommend to not save this ability and using it as much as possible while leveling in your dungeons. Holding onto this strong of a resource and waiting for the perfect moment does more harm than good when you can reap the benefits of the ability several times within one dungeon. At level 52, we'll gain Asylum. Asylum is a massive circular field that will regen any player that walks within it, as well as give a 10% bonus to incoming healing on those players. For non-white mage players, if you see one of these on the floor, stand in it. Looking at you, tanks. A size is unlocked at level 56 and will deal damage to all foes around the white mage, as well as healing allies and restoring some mana to the white mage. Use the soft cooldown and don't overthink the healing. Sometimes the healing's wasted, sometimes it's not. Just use it off cooldown. For raiding, you'll want to delay a size by about three GCDs before using it in your opener, so that way it's caught inside of raid buffs. Thin Air is our mana management ability obtained at level 58. It makes our next casted GCD cost no mana at all. Before, during our Cure 3 discussion, I mentioned that it costed 1,500 mana. I recommend using Thin Air on your Cure 3s. This also works on your raises and can negate the hefty 2.4k mana cost. Level 60 gives us access to our second o button, just call it Tetra. This is an off-global cooldown instant cast heal 
roughly on par with a Cure 2. It's excellent for quickly topping up someone who got hit by a mechanic they shouldn't have, or they were out of range of a heal. In Dungeon Pulls, this is a phenomenal resource to give to the tank, since it's free. Level 66 gives us Divine Benison, which is an ability that is somewhat similar to Tetra, except it's a shield rather than a heal. This is best used helping tanks mitigate tank busters, but also works at mitigating squishier targets who may soon take lethal damage. This is also a free resource, so you should be using it as much as possible. The more you mitigate and heal with your free resources, the less you'll have to GCD heal. Plenary Indulgence, or PI, is unlocked at level 70, and is one of our strongest burst healing tools. Once PI is active, every Medica, Medica 2, Cure 3, or Flatus Rapture will heal an additional 200 potency worth of health in a separate heal. The effect lasts for 10 seconds, meaning you can proc it several times. This is best used when your team is taking repeated heavy damage or needs to be topped to full ASAP. Level 80 gives White Mage its only party mitigation. Temperance will sprout wings from your character for 20 seconds, boosting all healing magic by 20%, while also making your party take 10% reduced damage. This is extremely useful in raiding, but don't forget to use this in your dungeons, as that 10% mitigation is very welcomed for the tank who has several monsters hitting them. Next is Aquavail which is similar to Divine Benison in a sense that it's single target defense, but this time in the form of 15% mitigation rather than a shield. Using this on tanks during dungeon pulls or on a tank during a tank buster is extremely helpful. And lastly, our final keystone ability is at level 90. Liturgy of the Bell will last for 20 seconds, and every single time the White Mage takes damage, all allies are healed for a potency of 400. This caps at five total instances of healing, meaning a maximum of 2,000 potency. If there are any stacks remaining, the healing will be halved and distri distributed. You can also recast the ability for the same effect. This ability is at its strongest when the party is taking repeated damage from raid or dungeon boss mechanics. And the White Mage can continue healing the party passively during those 20 seconds, even if you're moving or pressing glare. Next up, we're going to talk about the damage capabilities of White Mage, which is luckily condensed in just a few abilities. First up, we have Stone, which later gets upgraded to glare. You'll be spamming Stone or glare for roughly 80% of the time that you're doing damage on White Mage. And it also does respectable damage, so any time that you're not healing, you should be doing as much damage as possible with this ability. Next up is Arrow, which gets upgraded to Dia. This is a 30 second damage over time ability, or DOT, that you should be aiming to keep on bosses at all times. While running from place to place in dungeons, you should also be applying Arrow or Dia on as many enemies as you can, since it's really easy to do it while you're moving. Another useful tip is if you're in a raid encounter or a dungeon, you should consider moving your character while using this Dia, since it is an instant cast and you have free movement. You can save yourself some trouble by moving in advance while you're doing this. Holy is our AoE damage ability that's unlocked at level 45. For a healer, Holy does very potent damage, as well as stuns targets for four seconds. I cannot stress enough how important it is to use this ability in your dungeon runs on level 45 and onward. Stunned enemies are not dealing damage to your tank, making some of the hardest pulls in the game trivial, as well as giving you a larger window to heal your tank. The stun does have diminishing returns, but a few stuns back to back will completely absolve most pulls that were dangerous beforehand. Our final damaging ability is called Aflatus Misery, and is unlocked at level 74. 
Misery is an instant cast AoE around your target, being one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game. The trade-off is that you'll have to use three lilies in order to unlock this ability, and once you cast it, you'll need another three lilies if you want to use it again. It's worth mentioning that Aflatus Misery is not a potency gain in many raid scenarios, so you shouldn't start wasting all of your lilies once you unlock this ability. Remember, you have to cast three lily heals, followed by the Misery cast itself, in the time you could have casted four glares, making it potency neutral. This ability essentially means that when you are forced to move, you can opt to use your lilies to move, instead of dropping casts, effectively turning your heals into damage. Your number one priority is healing at the end of the day. Don't forget that. No one likes a Glare Mage. That about does it for all the abilities, but let's talk about some good practices. First, we'll talk about some dungeon tips. In dungeons, a White Mage's job is to keep regen on the tank during pulls, as well as utilizing the various off-global cooldowns such as Asylum, Venison, and Tetra. The White Mage should be spamming Holy, while these other resources do the healing job for you. A common trap I see people do is never using their OGCDs, and they never Holy, and they just spam Cure 2. This is one of the worst things you can do, as you not dealing damage makes the enemies live longer, as well as you are not able to heal as effectively as you should if you were using all of your OGCDs. Keep an eye out for DPS players that accidentally walk into AoEs and take chip damage. Regen is your band-aid here. I wanted to stress this again, as regen will provide enmity to you as a healer, meaning if your tank is not doing a good job grabbing aggro, you need to stay close to them and hope that they will pull the aggro back from the mobs. The fact that regen in itself generates enmity doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that your tank needs to maintain aggro, and that is their job. It's not for you to worry about. Okay, so this next tip is likely the most important thing in this guide, even though it's not actually about White Mage in specific. And that is that you should always be casting. This applies to every job in the game. No matter what, you should be rolling your GCD at all times. Meaning, if you're not healing your team with the GCD, you should be pressing Glare or Dia. Anytime you're forced to move, you can use a Lily GCD for healing, which is also damage neutral, thanks to Misery, or you can throw extra Dias at the boss, even if it's overriding your previous one. At all costs, you do not want to just stand around. It's the worst thing you can do on any job. But I notice a lot of healer players think they don't need to do damage when there's no one to heal. Train yourself to always be throwing stones or glares when you're not doing anything. So, to continue down this idea of always be casting, we have to talk about what clipping is. Clipping your GCD is using an OGCD on a GCD window. To avoid this, whenever you use your Dia or Lily, you will have two weave windows to use an off-global cooldown. Every time you press glare, you will have one weave window, unless presence of mind is active. So, you can get in the habit of every single time you dot, you throw a venison on the, the main tank. Little things like this will lower the amount of times you're clipping on each encounter, and extremely help with how much damage you can do, as you'll gain several casts of stone or glare when you're doing this best practice. You should always keep Dia up on the boss, and keep your lucid dreaming rolling for mana, and try to continuously utilize your free resources as much as possible. Asylums, Temperance, Lilybell, and your various single target options gives White Mage a lot of chances to react to people making mistakes and save people. A great way to get into the habit of using OGCDs is by utilizing target macros. A target of target macro will apply an action to the target of your target. In this case, if you're attacking a boss, that is your target. The boss's target is the main tank. We can assign Benison and Aqua Veil each to a target of target macro. 
so every time you click it, it will apply the ability to the tank without you having to select them. You can easily weave these macros in after you cast a Dia. Dia and Benison share the same cooldown. So this works out really nicely as it's when it's time to redot, you'll throw a Benison on the tank. I'm going to go ahead and include these macros in the description so you can give them a go for yourself. You can also use specific target macros for the tanks if you choose. You can assign an ability to be applied to the person in a specific spot in your party list, and this can be good for fights with two tanks that are both taking tank busters. I'll go ahead and throw the rest of these macros in the description as well. The next best practice we're going to talk about, and the final one today, will be our instant casts and how you can use them to your advantage. Instant casts grant the white mage free movement, and it's important to preemptively get out of the way of as many mechanics as possible while doing your free movement. Nothing feels worse than when you're trying to DPS the boss with your glares and he forces you to move a bunch. And in many cases, by learning the fight's mechanics and the sequence of attacks, you can preemptively get out of the way of a lot of this stuff and make your life a lot easier with your instant casts. And on that note, Swift Cast can also be used to get a heal in a pinch if you don't have a Lily. Swift Cast Medica 2, Swift Cast Cure 3, these are both fantastic options for an emergency heal, and it's better than letting someone die just to raise them. This is generally a last resort, but don't forget about this tool in your arsenal. So, those are some of the things that White Mage excels at, and why new players should give it a go, as well as people trying healer for the first time. Thank you so much for watching, and next time we'll be tackling Summoner, the only caster we'll be talking about on this series. If you had a good time, feel free to drop a sub. I also stream full-time on twitch.tv slash AriEffect. If you're feeling generous, feel free to drop a follow. Have a good day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.